Uh, we're going to get started. It's 9 o'clock. It is January 28, 2019, and this is the regular board meeting of the Sarasota Manatee uh, MPO. We do have a quorum. To start with, uh, we have a busy day. We have a 10 o'clock meeting, and then uh, we'll take a short break after that. The 10 o'clock meeting is our joint meeting with the Charlotte Punagorda MPO. We'll take a short break, and then we will move into the uh, FDOT 2045 meeting. Uh, a couple of uh, things. We have some new board members. Uh, Commissioner Moran uh, uh, is here from Sarasota County. Commissioner Servia is here from Manatee County. And uh, Pete Emmerich, Commissioner, is uh, here from the city of Northport. So they're new here. Uh, also, Chuck Newsom is here as an alternate for Ven Venice Councilman Chuck Newsom is here as an alternate alternate for Bob Daniels. Uh, this will be my first meeting as chair, and I am sure that I, my able vice chair, who knows more about this than I do, and the uh, mayor uh, Bryant and uh, most recent chair Vanessa Baugh, uh will jump in to help. They're both very introverted and probably won't speak up, but we'll see. Uh, with that, an, another organizational uh, piece, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, so you don't think that was my mistake number one uh, before the joint meeting. So we now have a quorum. First thing is open to the public. I've already been approached by one fellow who wants to speak. <coughs> open to the public is two minutes. Nanette will tell me when the two minutes are up. and. Uh, I do want to uh, ask everybody who speaks, and these are for items that are not on the agenda. I will ask every, everyone who does speak to please make, make it a little easier on me, and when Nanette gives the signal to just wrap it up in a sentence or two. Uh, Tom Nocera, uh, Tom, you're up, Skytran. Good morning. When, uh, when I was here for the last meeting, we uh, gave you a, uh, kind of an update as to what Skytrans plans are, and I have an announcement with regard to their uh, looking right now at locating their world headquarters in Pinellas County. They made a request to me to uh, find a site, and I've been working with uh, Pinellas County's economic development team uh, to encourage that to happen. They were here last week, and they also told me that in uh, May, late May or early June, they're going to have a demo track working operational in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, that, that's an important step for them. And then uh, the president of the CEO also was uh, telling me about where we needed to concentrate our efforts uh, here in the, uh, in the uh, area. And uh, so we're looking at uh, the possibility of a, a system that would operate basically between the Sarasota airport uh, going south along the uh, the railroad tracks with, I believe that's the uh, Gulf Coast Seminole Rail Railroad. So we did a scoping study last week just to check it out and uh, it looks promising. And I'm gonna leave it at that for right now because I know you're pressed for time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nassara. Uh We're gonna uh, start with the FDO FDOT report and I think Mr. Gaither, are you gonna do that today? Or who is? Oh. Mr. Abraham, perfect. He was the last one I talked to, so he was still in my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're actually going to tag team this. And uh, oh, okay. So as we start our FDOT report, one of the things I'd like to mention is that uh, we now have a new secretary for the Department of Transportation. Kevin Tebolt was um, uh, selected back in January, uh, January 18th, uh, just a few days ago. And with that. And let me ask a question, and our friend LK is still District 1. He is, yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, just to add on to that, I um, had a couple project updates that I want to inform the board on. Um, US 301 at Ellington Gillette Road, there was a maintenance permit project where crews constructed a turn lane. Um, US 41 at 57th Avenue West, US 41 between 37th Avenue West and 36th Avenue West. Uh, maintenance permit project where crews constructed driveways. State Road 72 at Gateway Road, Swift Road, and Beneva Road. We had a construction project going on where project uh, replaced existing sidewalks, crosswalk landings, 
pedestrian signals and lighting. Um, and Laurel Road at the Legacy Trail Crossing with a construction project where crews constructed a pedestrian bridge along the Legacy Trail over Laurel Road. All these projects have been completed um, and are operational um, since the last time we met. And then the last thing I want to bring to your attention was the public hearing um, scheduled for January 31st from 5 to 8 p.m. It's on uh, US 41 from Ringling Boulevard to Main Street, which is a PD&E project. The meeting will be held, or the hearing will be held at Hyatt, Reg Hyatt Regency in Sarasota. Uh, the address is 1000 Boulevard, Boulevard of the Arts, Sarasota, Florida. And uh, we'll be holding a hearing to discuss the recommended alternatives to US 41 from Ringling Boulevard to Main Street. The hearing will begin with an open house forum at 5 p.m. and then followed up with a formal presentation and public comment period at 6 p.m. Well, with that, I can take more questions. If we have any questions, uh, Commissioner Boa. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you here. Um, just a, a couple of things. Is there an update by chance on State Road 70 at Verna Bethany? I know that a study has been going on. Do we have an update or when that study might be complete or anything? I, I don't know the completion date for that study, but I know that we were doing uh, a safety analysis and a study in that area. But I'll, I'll be able to follow up with you after the board meeting. Thank you. Get more information Thank you. To you. And just one more comment. Um, I was uh, out of my county uh, on Wednesday at a meeting with FDOT in Sarasota at my church. And I just wanted to say that staff was wonderful, very helpful, and uh, we're just so grateful, the church is, for your assistance and, and the changes that you did make to 41 to help us with that. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Benack. Um, I wanted to ask about the uh, improvements planned to 301 in Parish, whether or not our board will be having any kind of a presentation on that. I know there was a meeting with the Parish Civic Association. Unfortunately, I was not aware that uh, DOT was going to do a presentation, so I wasn't there. But um, is there going to be an opportunity maybe for, if not this board, then um, the County Commission to have a presentation on the planned um, improvements? Yeah, 301 so in, in Parish? For, for that meeting, it wasn't actually a DOT meeting. We were actually kind of invited by the, the community to, to attend and address the situation. And I so want to say thank you for doing that. I know it was a very, from what I read in the paper, I know it was very tough. Yes. Tough sell for those folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of an understatement. But no, but it was, it was good to be able to kind of meet with the community and to share okay. kind of based on how we uh, approach those kind of situations. Um, I know the last time I spoke to our safety office, it doesn't warrant for a signal at uh, okay. County Road 680, I believe. Um, yeah, the County Road 301 there. Uh, it doesn't warrant for a signal. But we are looking into um, other improvements there, whether it's median improvements. But we'll be working with the county, and we'll definitely uh, inform you guys of, of what's going on there. OK, great. Yeah, I think most of us would like to know. Thanks. And Vice Chair Bryant. Um, just just a uh, quick question. I was so pleased with the initial modifications that were have been incorporated at the uh, Green Bridge and going into Bradenton. Uh, I would ask, has there been any other feedback other than through my office? Because I've gotten a lot of complaints about the square turn, and I understand what the agenda was in trying to do that, but I've almost gotten hit probably four times myself, as people think they're, they have to go around. Well, it's a difficult turn to make, so they veer over into the, to the left lane. And it's, it's really turning out to be very, very dangerous. I've received so many complaints at my office, and I was going to write a letter, but since we were having the meeting today, I was just going to ask if somebody could look at that and maybe see if there's been accidents um, at that intersection specifically yeah. because of that yeah. because it is very it's very squared and if it's a truck it's even worse okay yeah uh, I can definitely talk to our operation folks and uh, those who are over that project specifically and we can definitely talk with your office as well any other questions thank you but what you've done so far has uh, otherwise has been very very helpful just thank want you. to pass that on 
All right, that was three big compliments in a row. I'm hoping the fourth one will just bash <laughs> you, okay? But there's no, no one else. No one else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're on uh, Roman numeral number two, the MPO Executive Director's Report. Thank you. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Sorry we're so spread out, but at least everyone has a lot of room today, and, and hopefully the acoustics are such that um, we'll be able to hear each other. Um, I want to thank Sarasota County for the use of this facility today here in the city of Venice. Much appreciated. Um, I understand we'll get a big bill for it later, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the couple of, one of items, the first is in our agendas, the committee reports that have been presented where our advisory committees come and tell us that they heard about the same things that you're going to hear about and what their recommendations are have been um, moved onto the blue sheets as part of the report so that those chairs do not have to make a special trip here um, and it also helps streamline your meeting some. Certainly the committees are always available to the board should you wish to um, um, change that, but we thought that was helpful because some of the um, committee chairs had had some issues um, over the past year. The, so that's, that's one item. And the legislative update I sent out by email, it's basically a list of some of the legislation that's already been introduced, some of it does relate to transportation, and uh, Carl McKiska of the Metropolitan um, uh, planning organization advisory council will be sending those out and as soon as I receive them I will forward them to you the um, dangerous by design report did rank our region as having gotten a lot worse since their last report in 2016 data that they issued that in 2017 Actually, over the last two years, the safety um, statistics in our region have actually improved, and especially for bicycle and pedestrian. So we're working with them. We hope to have them uh, evaluate some of the methodology that they use to uh, what they call normalize some of the apples to apples numbers that um, uh, they use and then they normalize it based on the percent of the population that walks to work and not they do not factor in the percent of the pop, the number of people who are actually working uh, it's just total population um, and then they do some other things that are not necessarily apples to apples but uh, we're, we, we do have improvements to make and I appreciate your commitments in your jurisdictions to making safety improvements we take it seriously, and it, it's, you know, we've changed some of the um, criteria in our prioritization process to better account for safety, and we've been working closely with the Florida Department of Transportation to address the safety hotspots in each of your communities, and as you are aware of, so um, didn't want to let that, uh, let anyone think that we were ignoring that report, we do take it seriously, and Last but not least, we have a uh, flyer for the MPOAC Weekend Institute, which is open to elected officials serving on metropolitan planning organizations um, throughout the state. They have two sessions this year. If you, if you have not attended it, I highly recommend it. And if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to try to respond. Any questions for Dave? Okay, thank you, Dave. I see none. Uh, we're on item number three, the chair's report. Uh, first of all, a couple of uh, uh, the statewide MPO Advisory Council, MPO uh, AC, uh, will be this Wednesday. Uh, we made a decision at the last uh, MPO meeting that we'd have a couple of representatives because we found through uh, Commissioner Baugh that we were one of the few that would have a different one every year. So I re if I remember, uh, Councilman Roth, Commissioner uh, Baugh, and I believe one other person uh, are going to are going to attend with me. Uh, and this time, uh, it happens to fall 
on a regularly scheduled this Wednesday Sarasota County Board of County Commissioners meeting. So uh, they will serve us probably excellently, and I won't be there, but I will be at the next three. Commissioner Ball. Yeah, I will be, um, I'll be attending for this organization on Wednesday. And uh, Mr. Roth, you also? Orlando. It's in Orlando. We'll get you a sheet with all four of them, Patrick. Okay, the next, uh, next item, um, the District 1 Regional Transportation Forum begins uh, at 1130, following our joint meeting with the Charlotte Punta Gorda MPO. Uh, a few uh, gymnastics there, I was told, unless they get fixed, the two screens that hang in the middle and the back quarter of the room that are in the ceiling that descend do not work. So with that, everyone will have to sit, look at just the screen that's behind me. Uh, we're sorry about that, but that was uncovered when we got here this morning. And uh, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, there'll be a very slight adjustment to your bill because of that, okay. Uh, uh, I think la that, that uh, is, is it. And also there's no, uh, there was no, PTTF, Public Transportation Task Force meeting this morning, so there's no report for that. And I'll ask staff, because I don't want to insult anyone, as electeds come into the room, please give me their name during these, this meeting and the following meeting so we can announce them. Okay, we're on uh, number four, the consent agenda. Uh, I've been asked to read this into the record, including the items uh, for a, a record. All matters listed under the consent section are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the item is pulled. If discussion is desired by an MPO board member, that item will be removed and will be considered at the end of the section. Uh, the four items that we have this morning uh, are number one, approval of November 8th, 2018 meeting minutes. Number two, Manatee County office lease for the Sarasota Manatee MPO. Resolution number 2019-01, establishing travel reimbursement rates, and four, confirmation of appointments to the Sarasota Manatee MPO Bicycle Pedestrian Trails Advisory Committee, BPTAC, uh, whose service on this, this board is very much appreciated. Uh, so let's do that, and then I have one other business item. So uh, we'll take a motion on the consent. Uh, Commissioner Dieter. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Dietrich, second by Commissioner Boer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Is anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That moves forward unanimously. Uh, I would just note, and I'm sure you're all much more experienced at this than I am, but when we're in a joint meeting following this one at 10 o'clock, there may be items that just the other MPO will be having motions on. And when that occurs, as you know, but um, I'm ask, I was asked to say this into the record. We on this MPO do not speak to that motion, don't vote on it. So just that's there, that part of the meeting, it's as if we're not here. Uh, with that, I think we are now on item number five, Transportation Improvement Program, TIP amendments. And Mr. Abraham, it looks like you are back up uh, with, uh, and I believe uh, with uh, our Ryan Brown. Yeah. Hey, hi, there you are, Ryan. Good morning. Uh, for the record, Ryan Brown, MPO staff. Uh, just this morning, briefly, uh, three TIP amendments brought forward uh, by FTOT for us to add to our TIP. Um, one is just a little bit of right of way um, by the Clark Road interchange, and then two are 5307 SCAT grants um, for assistance for operational um, funding. They are in your packet, um, as well as the actual breakdown of when the money is being added in this current fiscal year. So if you have any questions with that, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, the recommended action we're looking for is an approval of the TIP amendments. Okay, before we get to the vote, any questions from uh, Ryan? Okay, none. Uh, this will require a vote by a show of hands, but first we'll need a motion on item number 5-1. Uh, Vice Chair Bryant. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, uh, motion made by uh, Vice Chair Bryant, seconded by Councilman Roth. All those in favor, 
there's no discussion, signify by a show of hands. Let the record show that uh, I, the chair has also voted and that passes unanimously. Great, thank you. Uh, we have items for uh, Roman numeral five, number two, 2019 project priorities and our uh, Lee Holt will do that for us. Good morning. Good morning. Lee. You have before you the project priorities for 2019. These will be forwarded to the Florida Department of Transportation for next year's work program and will be considered by the legislature in 2020 for funding as early as July 1 of 2020. But we're always looking at the fifth year because we already have a five-year work program with most of our funds allocated. There's very little change in the list from what you've seen before. Uh, we did have a few new projects, um, but mostly they're projects that you've seen before. Um, I want to tell you, and I hope that you will tell your staff, uh, they worked very hard on these applications. We moved the cycle up earlier in the year. Uh, FDOT had a new application, so they couldn't just submit what they had done before. They had to do brand new applications. And we had some additional information that was required, which actually gave most people more points um, and moved some projects up. But I did want you to be aware of that so that you can recognize your staff when appropriate. Um, but we are asking for your approval of the project priorities. Okay, do we okay. have any questions? Lee, is that it? Any, uh, Commissioner Dieter. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking at the list and um, our discussion for our board and in our county, a hot topic has always been River Road. And looking at the list, it makes sense to have bridge replacements and, you know, bridge maintenance. But when we can't even beat out a roundabout in our own county on point system, it seems a little bizarre to me that, you know, a roundabout at Ringling Boulevard would supersede the expansion of River Road, which is an evacuation sent road for Northport and Englewood on top of the fact that the Braves are coming here and everything else we have going. I have a relative who's visiting and he's only been here a couple of weeks and he said, wow, you really need to expand that river road. I went, and you just dropped from the sky and you figured that out. So could you tell me uh, under what point system, why did, why did that score so low? <laughs> The existing infrastructure that needs retrofitting always seems to score a little higher than new infrastructure. Um, I, don't, I don't know why that is. And it also has to do with, um, with the number of accidents. There's a lot of safety issues. Um, so the safety score might bump something above River Road, even though, although we know River Road is a great need and, and is, has safety issues. It doesn't have the kind of accidents that some of the higher locations have. Well, the, the reason for the number one, there is an existing road there, so it's not like it's a brand new road. The road exists. It's, and the reason why there aren't many accidents is up until now when we've had West Villages, we've had an growth tsunami and the thing with River Road is there's two kinds of accidents well really one kind you're either dead or they missed you because people have historically it's a very dangerous road because of the lack of traffic and people that continue to drive that way are going to be a little surprised with the new increase in traffic but uh, I just think we should have, somehow you should factor in the growth explosion and the fact that we're going to have so many thousands of people showing up for baseball games that have never been to that road in their life. What I can tell you is that all the projects that are in green are already funded in the work program. So there's a significant budget for River Road in the tentative work program. But that's tentative, and until the legislature votes on it, we don't take it off of the list. We, we don't move it. So it, it is funded in the work program. River Road is funded in the work program, but in the tentative work program. And, and that would be 
Justin, were you going to add something? Okay. Justin Abraham, Florida Department of Transportation, for the record. Um, I can't speak to the scoring. I mean, Lee can definitely do that. But as far as River Road goes and the priority of that project, uh, it's been a priority to this board and, and even to Charlotte um, Punta Gorda board uh, for quite some time. Uh, actually, within the last cycle, um, our partnership with Sarasota County made it possible to program that uh, much sooner, the construction of it. Last cycle, we had up until right away programmed. Uh, in our new work program that was just released in our tentative work program, it showed that we have construction program in fiscal year 2020, which is the next fiscal year. Um, 2021, my apologies. Um, so as far as construction goes, tentatively, yes, we do have it programmed. And uh, again, it is a top priority of this board and, and Charlotte counties as well. So right. thank you for refreshing my memory. So what you're telling me really is what No one. <laughs> uh, what you're, you're telling me is this is the MPO list and then we're also on a different state list and that would be 2021. C correct. There, there's always the MPO priorities as well and then the, there's the trip priorities which are regional uh, priorities as well and it was on both lists and so we took that into consideration and we were able to find uh, we were able to program funds for it but Lee is correct it does go before legislation and then if they approve it, uh, it goes before the governor and then the secretary of DOT to sign off on it, so. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Mr. Abraham, before you go anywhere, uh, Councilman Roth has a question and then I have one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so the color of the agreement that funded, um, we seem to have also a uh, reference to the paint and then uh, uh, light paint. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the The, the ones in pink are those projects that are um, in the current long-range transportation plan um, funding guidelines. The US 41 Tamiami Trail number 25A, that is a brand new project. Um, it will be going to FDOT for the first time for consideration. Commissioner Benet. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is the appropriate if this is the appropriate time or if I should wait until we um, talk about the tentative work program. But I did have a question about the Braden and Palmetto connector study, and I think it's great that it's a priority. But maybe if we could hear a little bit more about it. I know that um, there's not been a lot of discussion publicly about what that is. I think I know what it is. I heard, heard about it from LK at a luncheon. Um, but um, I think this is maybe might need just a little bit more discussion about what that is and the fact that it is prioritized in this next upcoming um, work program. Is that correct? Um, that's, that's correct. We have a PD&E called the Bradenton Palmetto Connector. It came out of the Central Manatee Network's Alternatives Analysis Study, um, and it was the top priority of the board um, this last year. Um, that PD&E will look to potential capacity uh, over the river if, if it needs an additional bridge or whatever capacity that may be. Um, it'll be able to identify if that's a need at all. Um, that PD&E uh, will happen prior to the actual PD&E for the existing DeSoto Hernando Bridge. Um, that DeSoto Hernando Bridge uh, PD&E that's scheduled I believe in fiscal year 23 will, will look into the potential replacement of that bridge um, and that PD&E were as the new Palmetto Bradenton connector will look into capacity, uh, additional capacity over the river. If, if I might, and I, I think that is extremely important that we go this next step from the Central Manatee Network Analysis Study, and that, that makes sense to do it this way before we you know, design a bridge, we've got to know what the capacity issues are. So um, when will the Central Manatee Network Analysis Study be actually finalized? I believe it's, it's it, I believe we have a, um, a presentation scheduled to the board uh, at our next meeting in March. Okay. So okay. we'll be able to uh, speak more clearly to those things there. Okay, great. Thank you.
Just uh, lastly, uh, thank you for confirming and answering Commissioner Dieter's question because originally it was fiscal year 2024 and now we've been told it's been moved uh, once it gets confirmed to fiscal year 2021 in conjunction with Sarasota County building part of it. So that's from uh, River Road runs north and south at that place in the county with F 75 and 41 running due east and west. So that's from 41 to 75 <coughs> and it's going to start very, very soon. So yes. thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, L l anything Please. else? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I just Commissioner Servia. Thank you. I have one quick question sure. about item number six. Could you please clarify the, the improvement that is planned on 41 there? Yes. Um, we will also have a presentation on this at the March meeting for your information. Um, originally, they were considering a roundabout at University and 41. Um, the studies are showing that that is not needed, that new turn lanes will accomplish what we need to do there. And then they are looking at a road diet from University to Pearl um, with more secure walking and biking for the college students in that area. Um, but we will have a presentation at the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I'm not missing you deliberately. It's a big room and I, I don't see. Uh, Dave wasted. Dave, yeah. Um, Dave, way down there, how Dave? <laughs> In our conveyance letter, after you have adopted priorities, and again, these are recommendations, so you know, the board can tweak the order if you want to. Um, jointly agree on tweaking on changing any of the order the because I see on the scoring that there is some um, overlap on some of these projects but we would be happy to identify in the cover letter what we have done in the past which is identify the large projects um, by calling them out specifically you know complete the Venice bypass for example um, 15th Street East in Manatee County and uh, River Road have been the top three, um, you know, capacity-oriented road projects for the past few years. And of course, then, um, you know, identifying for the state as a priority the bridge issues, which wouldn't necessarily be funded from our regional funds, um, and improvements coming out of our um, Central Manatee study and the Barrier Island traffic study as well, where we anticipate both safety projects and other uh, near-term operational improvements coming out of those projects. We would call all of those out in the cover letter if, if the board would like that. Any thoughts on that from the board? Uh, Commissioner Benek. Yeah, and, I, and we know that it is important to have um, consistency when we ask for these projects as well as showing in all the different, you know, our county commissions, the MPO, TBARDA, when we make a number one priority. So I, I, I really like your idea, but I, I, I've got to say it's got to be the DeSoto Bridge, the, the study and the replacement. That's been, we've been singing this song for a very long time, and we know that we've spent a lot of money in the Central Manatee Network analysis, and we're coming there, and we've got to keep moving to get this done. So. I don't have any problem with you doing that as long as it um, includes that project. And I know River Road, you know, when last time we were here with um, Charlotte County, uh, some of us may remember, there was a motion made that we both agreed priority. to make that a priority. That's right. And so I think, I think it's exciting that there's funding, that it's finally moving forward, but that one is moving forward, so <laughs> that's good. <coughs> you got to get to the point where we get done with studies and move forward with capacity improvements in that corridor. Dave. Yes, Commissioner Bowen. Uh, touching on what Commissioner Benack just said, you know, I, I do remember last year this time we did vote to make River Road a priority. So I am as well surprised to see it um, down as number seven on the list. But please, perhaps if, if I had a better understanding, if it's in green, then it's funded, correct? That is correct. So even though it might show as number seven, it's still moving forward, correct? Right. And they remain on the list, uh, whether they're funded or not, until we're all the way to construction. Okay, but it's funded 
I mean, funded 20... for construction in 2021. Okay, well, I just wanted to make sure on that because Betsy is right. We did vote to make sure that River Road was a priority, so. And you'll see at the next meeting that River Road is the number one priority on the um, trip list, which is the regional list that right. you'll vote on with Charlotte County. Okay, I'm good, thank you. Okay, any, any other questions? Uh, you'll also see on your blue sheet that our three advisory uh, committees all recommended approval. So I do think you need a vote on this, uh, Lee. Yes, please. All right, we're on Roman numeral five, item number two, 2019 project priorities. Uh, we'll take a motion, uh, Vice Chair. Chair, I would make the motion to approve the 2019 project priorities. Second. All right, uh, motion made by uh, Mayor Bryant, uh, seconded. I believe I heard Commissioner Benack first. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye, that passes unanimously. We're now on number six, reports and presentations uh, that may require board action, so staff will direct me on that. The first item, number one, is the FDOT five-year work program. Our Ryan Brown uh, with some comments, apparently, from FDOT. Good yeah, morning good, again. Good morning again. Um, yeah, just very briefly, there was already been some good discussion about uh, some of the projects uh, that we wanted to highlight. Um, attached in your packet is um, the entire summary of changes for the entire work program, as well as some um, work program highlights that we've developed to, to identify some of the large projects and additional funding that they've received. Um, had a good discussion about the DeSoto Bridge and bridge capacity. As you can see there, um, the, it, it is funded in fiscal year 1920 um, for the Pal Braden Palmetto Connector, as well as the following PDE in 2223, which is the replacement of the bridge, not including capacity. So those are both in there and, and are tentatively funded right now. Um, River Road, uh, there's that money, 73 million from in fiscal year 2021. Um, for the construction of that segment from I-75 to US-41. Uh, Legacy Trail, Ascension Phase 1. Um, there's been a little tweak that was in there last year. However, um, the, the, the design has been moved forward um, into 1920, has been split apart. In um, 2023, the rest of the construction money is still there, 22-23. So um, that'll be underway, design will be underway in 1920 for that project. Um, US-41 at Gulfstream uh, has been a discussion for a long time and is now in the work program uh, in fiscal year 1920 as well. That'll be done after um, following the Fruitville, which will begin here shortly. Um, the CMNAA, uh, Central Manatee Network Alternatives Analysis. Uh, you can see there some traffic operations improvements um, downtown that were identified by the, by the analysis, um, as well as the Palmetto Trail Network Plan, which is gonna address some bike ped oriented things in the Palmetto area. And lastly, um, I-75 at Fruitville, another large interchange, uh, has been programmed in the fifth year. However, I do believe that has been moved out a year um, due to hurricane relief efforts by the state. So that will not show up in the current work program. However, we've been told it's, it it's, will be programmed in the year out after that. So with that, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Those were some of the major projects that we wanted to make you all aware of and um, be happy to take any questions. Any questions for Ryan? Yes, Commissioner Van Ack. So that I just want to make sure I understand this chart that we were given, and there's some highlighted <laughs> yeah. items. I just I wasn't sure what that meant exactly. So, for example, the bridge replacement. Does that mean that's additional funding if it's yellow? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, for the yellow ones probably are identifying if, if yeah, it would be different additional phases added or additional okay. funding per phase. Jessica can probably touch on that a little bit. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that probably should probably have a, a little note on the bottom of that <laughs> future help. reference. We will definitely do that. <clears throat> What's highlighted in yellow, initially when we did the tentative work program, we sent out a copy of it in, I believe, December, November time frame. And then uh, we had a more final version of the tentative work program that was just sent out, I believe, January 16th, earlier this month. So what's highlighted in yellow are the changes between those two reports or what's changed slightly. Um, some of it could be funding, um, some of it could be uh, a new project that's been added or some projects that have been deferred or maybe even deleted or moved out of the five-year work program. So those are just a slight changes that may have uh, occurred between those two reports. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? 
Seeing none, uh, Ryan, do we need a motion on no, this? No, actually, it's just making you all aware of some of the changes that, that we've seen in the word program. Okay. No need, no actually need. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're on item number two, long range transportation plan, LRTP, and Lee Holt is gonna help us with that. Good morning again. I'm not gonna say much because we are going to spend the most of the rest of the day talking about the long range <laughs> transportation plan. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that we hope you're going to be staying with us for the program. We have some fabulous presentations from five speakers um, who will be here today. Yeah. I, I'm especially excited about the Florida Chamber of Commerce presentation. They have for two years been working on a 2030 master plan for the private sector. And it's very interesting how their plans um, have so many infrastructure and transportation needs in order for the private sector to be successful in Florida, they're dependent on us um, for resiliency and roads and airports and freight. Those are things that they've identified as, as things that are important for them, their members, to be successful. So I'm re really excited about Alice's presentation and I hope you'll be able to stay for the whole program. Well, thank you, Lee. Uh, with that, uh, questions, uh, Commissioner Boa. First. Yeah, um, maybe I'm just not looking in the right place or thinking clearly this morning on this cold morning. Um, State Road 70 from Lorraine Road down to 675, I didn't see it anywhere. Am I missing something? Perhaps? Justin? Help? Um, in the draft tentative work program? I'm not sure. In all honesty, I just didn't see it anywhere. So, and I know that it's moving forward. The last I heard, I just want to make sure. My apologies. What was the uh, Lorraine Road, uh, State Road 70 at Lorraine Road down to 675. I think the PD&E has been done and designed, as far as I can recall. I don't know yeah. it off the top of my head. Uh, off memory, I would have to look into it and get back with you if that's okay. Um, I, I don't. I don't believe it's been deleted um, from my memory. So if it's in current Can you year, check on that for me and let me know, yes, please? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Vice, Vice Chair Bryant also. I just have one question uh, for Lee probably. Is it going to be videoed for those of us that can't stay today? Yes, ma'am, it is. Good question. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, we, we, we moved right along and we're almost, uh, all, we just, we're still around time. Uh, with that, we'll move up to Roman numeral number seven. Uh, member comments, uh, Commissioner Servia, we'll start with you since I didn't see you the last time. Oh, thank you, I don't have any comments. Okay. Is, could you repeat that, Commissioner Moran? Nothing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk slower. Uh, Commissioner Councilman uh, Newsom. Mayor, that's it. I, I just, I just want to make the point that I really appreciate Commissioner Benack staying on task and, and helping me lead the charge because that is critical for us. So I want to say thank you. And thank you to our other county commissioners in, in Manatee because I know you thank know you. how important that is. Thank you all. Commissioner. Welcome to the new commissioners that we have with us today, and uh, this is a great group. I look forward to the year. Thank you. Commissioner Dieter, anything else? No, I'm practicing my listening skills. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that one. <laughs> Commissioner Daly. Just a, uh, a, a general comment. We've been working uh, with the uh, LK and uh, the F, F, F dot with respect to the uh, Gulf Stream US 41 interchange and the like. And we've had concerns with whether that's the best configuration vis a vis the present configuration and the like. And we listened to a presentation to our commission that was helpful from F dot and after listening to that presentation, uh, our commission decided to uh, hire a consultant to review kind of a peer review of the uh, FDOT approach, which evaluated 
the present configuration vis-a-vis uh, -vis the proposed roundabout and the like. Our, our consultant uh, reviewed with FDOT and with the FDOT peer expert uh, their findings and we're reviewing those. Both experts now are reviewing each of the uh, analysis here. Well, one concern we, we've had that we've expressed, and uh, uh, I think it's in the works, is the present configuration was just completed at that intersection probably in May of June of last year, meaning that it hasn't been fully tested uh, uh, under peak traffic conditions. Uh, we've been advised by FDOT that they will excuse me, that they will uh, conduct that evaluation uh, and the like. Uh, we do have a meeting scheduled between the two experts here this week here to evaluate and hopefully work out uh, what differences there are. Uh, very frankly, we're, we're, we're still somewhat skeptical that indeed at that intersection here that the, the roundabout uh, it is the best uh, configuration. The, the limited experience we've had with the present configuration uh, has been very good for, from, our, from a lot of our, our residents and the like. And, and we, we think that with an evaluation of how that works under peak okay. conditions, here will shed some light on it as well. So uh, just, just updating uh, the board here, the standpoint of uh, uh, our approach and what we're doing. And this has all been very amicable with FDOT. They've shared what we've got and we're sharing with what they have as well. But it's a serious matter. This intersection probably is the most important evacuation uh, intersection for Long Oak Key for most of our residents and the like. So it's a big focus for us. And, and we're hopeful that we can continue to work with FDOT and, and uh, uh, see what improvements and fully convince us and them as well that indeed the roundabout is, is the best uh, long-term solution. The jury is still out from our viewpoint, but that remains to be seen. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Daly. Uh, Daly. Uh, with that, let me just announce our next meeting date. It will be held on March 25th, 2019. There will be a public transportation task force meeting at the MPO office, uh, followed by our regular, this MPO board meeting at the Holiday Inn Sarasota Airport at 9.30. Remember, our space just got approved and the build-out is occurring, so meetings that are scheduled for the MPO offices are still at our current offices. With that, we're going to adjourn, and then we'll reconvene uh, at or about 10 o'clock.